Hi everybody, welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan. Today we're talking reads, specifically how do quarterbacks make reads? We're diving into it, let's get it started. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> All right, so today's video starts from a question from Joe Davey. Hey, JT, love the content. I've been wondering if you could do a video on progressing through reads. I know it's play specific, but are there some general rules? Thanks. Joe, awesome question. Appreciate it. You dig this kind of content and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, get the notifications, let you know when we go live, when we put out new content. I appreciate the support for the channel. Then you want to learn everything you ever wanted to know about RPOs. I And probably what I think is the best thing this channel has ever done, check out the RPO course. It's in the video description to this video. You can do it now. You can do it at the end of the video. I don't care when you do it. As long as you think about enrolling, I appreciate it. Now let's dive into this one. Let's go reads, quarterbacks, how did they do it? So this video's timeline for teaching and talking about reads is really going to go uh, from kind of a story about Brett Favre to start with, then kind of how I learn reads in the league, and then a little bit more practical about how maybe just about everybody can kind of bucket these types of reads. And then finally, we'll show some examples at the end. But really, the story that kind of frames my understanding of it and how I best think it's kind of explained is that uh, when I was with the Packers and Brett was playing, whether it was a quarterback coach, offense coordinator, someone would ask him, hey, Brett, what's the read on this play? What's the read on that play? His response was always, one, two, three, put it on him. And that, you know, as you as much of a joke as it was at the time, there is a lot of truth to it. And this idea of not overcomplicating what seems like it really is a complex thing, but in reality isn't. And so I'm going to try to unpack it and kind of pull it back a little bit. But the idea at the end of the day is it's one, two, three, put it on him. And so the way that I learned reads in the league is kind of three different buckets. I'm going to go through each one. One is a pure progression, which means no matter what the coverage is, it's kind of one, two, three, four, five, whatever. One, two, check down. One, two, three, check down. One, two, three, four, check down. Some variation of a specific set of where you're looking to get the ball to the check down. The next is going to be what I'm used to calling a progression with an option. This is usually tethered to, if you're in the West Coast world, an alert or some specific coverage look that you would then go outside of the progression, the normal progression, and take a shot maybe down the field with kind of an alert post or an alert go or alert versus certain coverage, whether it's pressure, some sort of built-in option. And then finally, I'm used to calling a pick aside, a PSL, meaning that based on the leverage, based on the shell, based on the coverage, you kind of pick one side of the field or not. So a pure progression can be across the field, kind of a full scan. A progression with an option could be an option on one side, a progression on the other. Uh, uh, pick a side is more like a mirrored route combinations. A lot more common lower levels of football where you pick a side based on leverage, matchup, you know, could be any number of different things. But those are the three buckets that I was taught NFL football from Mike McCarthy, now the head coach of the Cowboys. And it just was one of those things that made sense to me that just about every read falls into that bucket. Now, saying that, could you go in and play, you know, in an NFL offense as a quarterback? you probably could mentally go back in there and understand it. But how do those progressions kind of tether to actually how you play? You know, because you don't want to be a robot. You're not a robot going back there kind of going one, two, three, four, check down. That's not how it happens. How it happens at what I think are the best offenses is that the quarterbacks drop. So you, you, maybe you've wondered why, you know, sometimes a quarterback takes three steps under center. Sometimes a quarterback takes five steps, seven steps and shotgun, those same types of drops. So the quarterback's drop is usually tethered to the depth of the routes. So when the quarterback hits that back foot, wherever he stops on a drop, that's usually indicated the timing of when that first route in the progression or the option should be thrown. So whether it's three steps it's usually shorter routes. This is pretty intuitive. Five steps, kind of mid-tier drop. Mid routes, seven-step drops under center back in the day. More down the field throws. And so when the quarterback hits that back foot in the ground, and whether they take no hitch, no reset, or one tight hitch, or tight reset, however you want to talk about the, the footwork of the quarterback at the top of the drop, when they hitch up, that should time up 
with the court with the quarterback's first read in that play. That's why the quarterback's footwork is so specific. Now, does it always work out perfectly? No, absolutely not. If, if the wide receiver or whoever the first read is, is getting bumped, you'll often hear people say, you know, give it a reset, give it a kind of pause at the back end, sit into your drop. But you have to, we always tell wide receivers, you got to understand that the quarterback's never getting bump coverage. They're always going to have perfect timing and rhythm in their drop, or they should, at the back of that drop foot. So when they hit that back foot and they hitch up, whether it's hit the back foot, no hitch, or hit the back foot and hitch up or reset, that times up with the first read. Now the second hitch, so if you don't throw that first read, that second hitch usually times up with the second read. We're getting nuts here, right? See if you can follow along. Guess what the third hitch is? The third read. And so by that time, you usually have a clock in your head saying, hey, I either need to run it, check it down, or get out of here. You know, after a third or fourth hitch, you're going to be pretty fortunate to not get pounded from the pocket. But that's what really is going on as far as the progression. So it doesn't matter what the play is. If you're constructing an offense, if you're playing quarterback, if you're just watching ball, want a better understanding of it, when you see a quarterback hitch, 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 that really means that they, timing-wise, should be going through their reads. Now, can you, you know... Hitch, give two hitches to a, a route that is the number one in a progression? Sure, but you're going to be kind of late to everything else. You better be hanging on him because you know you're going to get him or you're going to have to kind of go from one to three or uh, you know different ways that progressions can be jumped. I always think of if you're in shotgun or even if you're under, under center and you bobble the ball, say you see a quarterback, you see this all the time, quarterback's in shotgun, the snap's a little off or they bobble the ball, that usually means you're either going – the good quarterbacks will go right to the check down if you're in the league or they go right to number two. And that's kind of that train thing because not because they couldn't throw number one, but because the timing of the progression is jacked because they've now bobbled the ball. That really takes a reset or a hitch out of it. And so those type of learned things you get as you become more and more of a veteran, you know, and I didn't get till probably half a decade in the league, but this idea being that everything is tethered to the footwork of the quarterback the depth of the wide receivers or the whoever's running the routes and then timed up with these kind of your the progression of your feet so there's a bunch of different fancy ways and all, you know any different number of offensive systems but at the genesis of it at the absolute core when you're talking how do quarterbacks operate or make reads no matter what bucket it falls into it's almost always tethered to the feet and tethered to how many hitches or resets, whatever word you're going to use to talk about what that looks like from a quarterback to either kind of stay in place and reset their feet or hitch up. Those type of movements are tethered to one, two, three, etc. And so that's just kind of the base understanding of what that looks like. Now let's talk a little bit about the specific buckets of reads. The pure progression, I know some coaches that only do pure progressions. And that means no matter what uh, the coverage is, you don't really have to quite understand coverages in my opinion quite as much with pure progression you kind of get an opportunity sometimes to get the ball out of your hand a little faster because no matter what the coverage is this receiver is going to be one on this play so one two three you memorize you learn the plays and you can play really fast and it's, so it's a really nice way to get young guys in who can play fast and kind of get the ball out of your hand really quickly i love it pure progression the vast majority of plays that i call teach are pure progressions from there you get progressions with an option. So again, now you get built-in alerts. So there's an element of kind of old school West Coast when you start talking about built-in alerts, but every offense has some variation of these, whether they call them progression with an option, whether they have a fancy term for them, whatever it is. It's basically the play is a normal pure progression, but if we get quarters, we want to do this. Or if we get zero, we want to do this. Or if we get middle field closed, now we alert this. And so this idea being that it's a progression, but an option versus specific look. And then the pick a side is really what I think most lower levels of football do just about all the time. You gotta think mirrored routes. So you're thinking, you know, two comebacks, two outs, two slants, two hitches with maybe like a middle field read or some sort of tight end route to kind of keep everything balanced. So that's more pick a side ish. And so I think that they, they all have some validity. I think some of them are easier to do than others. But I think when you get into the progression with an option world, it's, you know, 
it's for me it's a little bit more satisfying because you get an opportunity to really stretch a defense both horizontally and vertically what i mean by that is you can have something that is alerted versus specific look so that wide receiver is going to run hard because they know they might get the ball but the play is really over here and so there, there's just as opposed to saying hey you know Everybody on the team knows pure progression. It's not going to me. I'm going to kind of loaf or chill or whatever, turn it down a little bit. So there's this idea being that you can really, you know, make a unit kind of everybody think that they're going to get the ball, creates a different sort of energy, creates a different sort of uh, stress on a defense. So I personally love progressions with an option. But again, you have to be able to identify coverages. You have to be able to identify the shell of the defense, the roof of the, def the defense, whether it's middle field open, middle field closed, maybe man zone, all those things kind of come together. And so for me, you know, I like having all of them as far as a peer progression, progression with an option, pick a side. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what it is, how you do it. As long as you're explicit as a coach, as long as you understand it as a player, but if you're a fan, understanding that there can be a bunch of different ways to do it. It's not just, hey, you know, the quarterback needs to know the coverage. Sometimes they don't need to know this coverage. Sometimes it's just a pure progression. And they're looking to see, is he open? Is he not? Hey, and sometimes it's not that complicated. Is he open? What does open mean? Can you throw it and a defender not contest it? Meaning that with a defender hit it. If the defender doesn't hit it, he's open. Now, open is different for different guys. Some guys have a cannon. Some guys can fit it in tight windows. Some guys have a little bit more gunslinger mentality to take shots. But can you get it in there without a defender not getting his hand on the ball? Let it go. Rip it. Other than that, move on to the next one. And you got to do it smooth within that drop at the back end. That's why it's so important for that footwork at the back end. You hear talk about all the time, base, cleats in the ground, smooth, fluid, all that tethered to the read. That's why it's so important. Now you see the connection of what it looks like. So let's take a look at a few images just to get an idea if we were playing quarterback and it was progression with an option. So let's say, hey, you know, if it's middle field open quarters, we might have a shot at something here. And we'll look at a few images just to see how simple it is, how blurry it is sometimes, what do pressure do to all those progressions. So you got to have all those things built in. We didn't talk at all about pressure. But when you get into pressure situations, now what is the read? Where's the hot? Those things are all tethered to a progression. So you start to see the mental gymnastics you needed to get, but don't get it twisted. At the end of the day, it's one, two, three, put it on them. So the first image we're going to look at here, UCLA three by one, and it's pretty simple. Middle field closed. That sure looks like, man, that's birds on a fence. That looks like you're going to get picked too. But again, really simple. Closed, and this guy's so close now, you know, you'd almost like to see him a little bit back further, I think, in most defenses. But this looks like bump covers to me. This looks like man, middle field closed, man. All right, now we got three by one going the other way. Different look, nobody in the middle of the field. This sure looks like middle field open. We got two safety types back. We got corners up in what look like potential cloud situations. You know, three by one, you're always going to want to know what that weak side safety is doing coming down. But again, this to me, pre-snap has middle field open shell. So if you have some sort of quarters alert, you have some sort of middle field open, middle field closed read. Again, all these progressions, if they're tethered with any sort of option, you got to be able to tell the shell so you can see the difference. Nobody in the middle of the field. Finally, last one here. This one looks a little bit more like the first one. You know, they're not at a level, you know, right across. It's got potential middle field closed. But again, he's creeping to me. But the one big difference back here that now we're not in bump. Now we're off and we're potentially off inside, off inside. Everyone all the way across, birds on a fence. This is the high alert that it's probably zero. Anytime you have all the DB guys close to all being at the same level, you're going to get hit with zero, which is exactly what they get hit right here with the, with the safety coming down, getting trying to get onto that back in a man-on-man -man situation. But again, we went through really quickly three different looks to go from middle field closed man, middle field open zone, zero, so again, you got to have the capacity if you're going to live in that progression with an option world to be able to see that in real time. Now, it's obviously easy when we're looking at screenshots from, you know, kind of an elevated, you know, 30,000 foot view from the press box. It's a lot easier to see that as opposed to in the pocket, you know, through a helmet in real time going really fast against guys who are pretty good at football. So there's this idea. That's why it's a little bit more complicated when you start getting into the progression with an option world or pick a side based on coverage world. And I think that's why most coaches probably rightfully so default to pure progressions. But again, just understand 
there's probably a bunch of other ways to be able to do it too. That was just the way it was taught to me in the league, three different ways, pure progression, progression with an option, pick a side. I think that there's a lot of validity to each of them, but at the end of the day, one, two, three, put it on them.